Hello friends, welcome to the Navas Kitchen. And if you are visiting for the first time, as always, a very warm welcome to you. Thank you so much for choosing to join us today. On the menu today is our vegetable stir fry with a beautiful curry sauce, a dish inspired by one of my favorite restaurants to dine in, P.F. Chang's. So I bring this to you, you're gonna love it. I cannot wait to get started. So let's wash our hands and begin. Yes, friends, so the secret to an enjoyable, smooth ride through this preparation and cooking experience is by prepping all your ingredients before you even start. So I have two cl cloves of garlic. I have diced finely, including this shallot onion, which I'm going to incorporate in my unifying component, which is my curry coconut sauce. Now for the vegetable stir fry part, I have my onion and please use any amount of vegetables you want and any kind of vegetables as well. So I have my carrot, I've prepped my onions and as you can see, I am cutting them into bite-sized pieces. So that way we have that texture. Now this is another one of my love letters to my vegans and vegetarians out there. So yes, there will be no animal protein in this preparation. So I have a variety of ingredients that I'm just prepping and we'll go from there. So our carrots, broccoli, cauliflower, onions, our garlic, and our shallot onions have all been prepped. And now I'm working on my bell peppers. Choose a, a variety of colors to bring that beauty to the dish because we do eat with our eyes first, right? So let's feast our eyes first before we even put this amazing taste of food into our mouths. I'm also incorporating these portobello uh, mushrooms. Now these mushrooms are going to serve as that meaty aspect of this dish so that way we're not missing the animal protein. Now I'm cracking a coconut to prepare my homemade coconut milk which we're going to incorporate into our coconut curry sauce. All of our vegetables are prepped. Now there are some that I need to give a quick boiling too to steam them and then quickly blanch them to retain their color and also their crunch. So I have my cauliflower, the broccoli and the carrots. 30 seconds is all it takes. I have put some salt into the boiling water and now I'm going to run some cold tap water on it to stop it from cooking. This process is known as blanching. So that's also ready. Now that all of our ingredients are prepped, we are ready to begin cooking our coconut curry sauce. So in a saucier pan, you're going to add about a tablespoonful of coconut oil, the virgin coconut oil, and it's cold pressed, so it is intense in terms of the coconut flavor. We're going to also add our chopped garlic and shallot. Now I have um, aniseed, turmeric, curry powder, a pinch of garam masala to enhance the curry flavor, and then I also have freshly crushed black pepper and salt. The ingredient amounts are all listed in the description box below, so please be sure to check it out. So we're going to cook these ingredients we've just added. Remember, these spices are raw. If you don't cook the rawness out, you will taste the rawness and it will be unpleasant and it will be grainy. So you want to give it a good cooking time. Three to five minutes will be sufficient while you're constantly stirring on medium heat. See how that's cooking out. Now our secret ingredient here is our tomato paste. This tomato paste is going to bring us that needed sweetness, will also help enhance the color of the curry and also the taste as well. So that also needs to be cooked out. So we'll continue to cook and please add some more oil as you go because as you can see, it tends to dry out because of all the dry ingredients we added. So you want to cook it another three minutes once you add the um, tomato paste. Now we're adding some flour, a tablespoonful of flour, and it's just all-purpose flour to create a roux. That also needs to be cooked out, and I just added some more coconut oil because it's way too dry at this point. I added about a tablespoonful more. Continue to cook. 
the flour needs to be cooked out as well because it is raw. And if you don't cook it out again, you will taste the rawness of it. So as you continue to cook, it tends to become more paste-like. No worries because we're going to derive our curry coconut sauce out of this mixture. This mixture has now become the base for the sauce. So I just added two cups of our homemade coconut milk into our base. And we're going to stir it in vigorously. Our heat has been turned down at this point. What we're trying to achieve here is to get all the ingredients well stirred in so it becomes nice and silky smooth as you can see here. You want to, at this point, cook it down for about seven more minutes. And at this point, the sauce is super rich in terms of its flavor. So we want to cut through that richness with some citrus flavor. So I added the rind of a small lime. So that citrus note is going to cut through that uh, richness. Now I am adding one more cup of the homemade coconut milk. I'm going to be turning the heat off in about 15 seconds. Whisk or stir that in. And once it's well incorporated, you will turn your heat off and your sauce is ready. It is delicious, intense in flavor and it's going to be a perfect sauce for our vegetables. So we have the perfect consistency as you can see here. We are ready to stir fry our vegetables. So in my wok here, I add some olive oil and going forward, we're cooking on high heat. We're going to first pour in our prepped onions. The smell of grilled onions, oh my goodness, that's to die for. And that's one of my favorite aromas in the kitchen. I add some salt and crushed black pepper is going in right now. And we're going to cook this for about 30 seconds to a minute before we add the rest of our ingredients. I just added the salt. Now we're adding our mushrooms. Now for the coconut milk in the previous preparation in the sauce, if you do not know how to prepare homemade coconut milk, I do have a video which I made my wache in and I incorporated the making of coconut homemade coconut milk in there. You can check that out. It's listed in the description box below, the, the link to the wache video. So check that out. So the rest of the ingredients all go in. We give it a quick toss, season as appropriately, and you are done. The stir frying of these ingredients shouldn't take more than three minutes. We want to retain the crunchiness, that's why we're cooking on high heat, and we also want to retain that freshness. What I just added is some parsley. That's just going to bring everything together and give it a great look and aroma. We are done. The heat has been turned off. Let's serve. Now transfer all of your stir fried ingredients into your serving vessel and then drizzle in your um, curry coconut sauce or you can just pour the curry coconut sauce into your wok of stir fried ingredients because you can use the curry coconut sauce in other ways too it's very versatile you can add some chicken if you're not vegan or vegetarian you can add beef to it you can even use it as a dip just look at this liquid gold right here literally thank you so much for watching i hope you try this recipe you will love it also visit our group on facebook chop time yes friend and post your videos and your photos make it a great day and have fun especially in that kitchen